Okay, everyone, I have very exciting news. I finally got a new sewing machine, woohoo! And I looked at the reviews on this one before I got it, and I think it's gonna be really, really good. Uh, and I got it on sale, I think it was like 80 pounds. So, yay! New sewing machine! So today, we are hand sewing something. I know, I'm sorry, I, I did the whole thing with the sewing machine. Yeah, I need some time to kind of figure out how this one works, because it is a bit more high-end than my other one. And I don't actually know what I'm doing, so... It's gonna take me a minute to, to kind of play around with it and figure out how a real sewing machine works because mine was uh, not great. I do have a really exciting project in mind for the next video, but for today, I thought that I would make myself a personalized coffee sleeve. I make these a lot, actually. I make them generally for, you know, Christmas and birthday presents and that sort of thing. Like, all of my friends have a personalized coffee sleeve and they have asked for some very interesting things embroidered onto them. I won't give you the details because it's not safe for work. This is the first one that I ever made and I made it for myself because I was like, if I'm gonna screw this up, I should make it for myself. So it's just got my initials on it and it's cute. I didn't quite know what I was doing then because it was also one of my first times ever embroidering anything. So like, it's fine, but I've got different methods now. And so yeah, I thought it might be time to treat myself and make a new one. So I don't normally label my videos as tutorials because generally I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. But this time, I do know what I'm doing because I've made a bazillion of these, so I'm gonna walk you through it and it's a really fun and easy and quick gift to give someone and all of my friends love theirs, so I figure, yeah, let's, uh, let's teach you how to do something. Wow, I actually know what I'm doing for once. This is a rarity. I will not. Next, the, the next video, I will, I will not have any idea what I'm doing and you're gonna come along with me for that ride, but for now, wow, just in, enjoy me teaching you something for once. Let's get to sewing. Okay, sorry if you can hear my fan going in the background, it's really hot here today. So, anyway, I've got a coffee sleeve, uh, not spawn. Well, kind of spawn because I work for them, but not spawn. First thing I'm gonna do is open it up. So now, I'm just using this uh, scrap fabric. This is a really great thing for using up scrap fabric, by the way. And this fabric is from my vest project, which if you want to see that train wreck of a project, you can click the thingy. Let's fold this over. Make sure you have enough room for the seam allowance, because that will be important. Um, pro tip, by the way, if you have one of these pencils, I could never figure out how to use them because they never seem to like actually stay, but if you dip them in water, that works really, really well. See? Learning things with your Charlie. Now we trace this guy out. Sorted. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see that. Great. So... Now we just cut it out of the two layers of fabric, and again, make sure you leave plenty of seam allowance. It's always better for this to be a little bit bigger rather than smaller because we're gonna slide this in later, and if it's too small, then it's really difficult to get this in. Fabric is being mean to me, so I might have to do this one bit at a time. mirror images. I always cut out my patterns like this. I like to trace them net and then cut it out with my own seam allowance, but if you prefer to add seam allowance, you can always trace this onto paper and then, you know, add the seam allowance yourself however you like to do it, but this is how I prefer to do it. So I'm only going to pin the bottom for now and I'll show you why later. Okay, so I'm about to start sewing this seam. I'm actually going to start all the way through this bit of the seam allowance and go up and I'm starting a little bit outside of the seam, uh, the seam line that I've marked because the copy sleeve itself is going to add some width to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and back stitch this and I might put on a video and just kind of get to sewing. stitched this edge to edge and I am going to embroider something on this. So normally what I do when I embroider something is I make like a template on Word. I pick my nice font and everything. I put these lines here um, so that I know where the center of my project is and I can line it up with the center of this cross 
and then I just trace it. But as you can see, my fabric is very thick. Normally I can use my computer screen as like, I turn up the brightness all the way and I kind of use it as a light box, but yeah, that's not gonna work today. So I'm gonna trace it on a piece of paper instead and then I'll show you how I transfer it onto the canvas. Okay, now we transfer it onto the fabric. So this is why I made sure to only sew the bottom because basically we don't wanna embroider through both layers, right? We only wanna embroider through the top layer because otherwise we won't be able to slide the coffee sleeve in. So I open up the fabric like this and then I will just embroider on the top layer, which make sure that it lines up with the way that this goes. So now I'm going to center this on my fabric and then basically you just stab it with your pins. So I'm literally just tracing the outline with my pin. Now, if I kind of run my pencil over this line, I can either do it this way and try and kind of put the pencil through the dots, or you can just poke out all of this and kind of punch out this bit and then color in the space, essentially. So I might do it that way because this doesn't seem to be wanting to go through the paper super well. I mean, the pencil's not super sharp either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna poke all the way around this and then punch out the letters. So you can see it's a little bit messy. Um, and obviously the, uh, the center of the R didn't come out very clean. So I might just freehand that one. It's okay that it's a little bit messy because this is mostly just a guide and then I can kind of touch it up later, but I'm not very good at like calligraphy in general. So I wanted to do it this way. One letter down, seven to go because my name is just so long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera and then we will trace it onto the fabric. Uh, okay, so that kind of worked. Okay, I was having a lot of trouble doing the, uh, the punch out and, and color in thing. I think it works a lot better with bigger letters, but because this thing is so small, it just, it was not working super well. So I ended up freehanding it. I think it looks okay. This is just for me anyway. And I also added a pretty little design of some vines. So I think that'll be quite nice. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and embroider it. I kind of taught myself embroidery, so I can't exactly remember what all of these stitches are called. I think this one is a back stitch. But I use this one for like the thinner lines. And then for the thicker parts of the letters, I'll just go straight across. Um, and I'll kind of show what you what I mean in a minute. But for now, I'm just following the line that I made. Sorry, the framing on that was not great, was it? So this is what we got so far, and I'm just gonna follow my lines, and then I'll show you what I do when I get to the thicker part of the letter. So I've done this little vine with what is actually called a split stitch, not a back stitch. Uh, clearly, I know nothing about embroidery. And now I'm gonna do what I think is called a satin stitch. I did just look this one up, so. Again, super profesh, but yeah. So this one, you're, I'm just kind of filling in the line here because I want this to be a bit of a thicker line. I don't wanna use the split stitch for this one. That's the basic idea. So I do this for the thicker lines and then for the thinner ones, like this little bit of the R here, that I'll go back to a split stitch, and that's pretty much what I do. Again, I'm kind of a, a beginner embroiderer, and I mostly taught myself, so uh, this is just kind of what I've intuitively figured out and learned from tutorials and that sort of thing. I will continue and just embroider that bit, and then I'll do the vine the same way, and then we can assemble the, the coffee sleeve. This is actually, it's, it's coming together pretty quickly. Like I said, this is a very quick and easy sewing project. I mean, it probably will take me three hours tops. All right, embroidery is done. It is not the neatest job I've ever done. I don't wanna talk about this E, I don't know what happened. Anyway, the next step is I'm gonna fold this back that way and I'm gonna stitch the top the same way. So I'm gonna go end to end uh, including the seam allowance and also just a little bit outside of my seam line. Same thing as earlier, so I will go ahead and do that. 
Okay, so that is done. And now we carefully turn this back the right way. Don't want to rip our stitches, which is why we backstitch it because uh, I definitely have done this before where I did not backstitch it and that did, that did not turn out well. That was not fun. I'm gonna take this guy and just coax it in. This is where stitching slightly outside of the steam line really helps because otherwise it's so hard to uh, to make this work. I suppose you could also like interface this and then not need the cardboard thing and then it would actually be uh, washable as well. I've never really needed to wash mine and none of my friends seem to have an issue with it so this is just how I do it. But there are a couple ways that you could finish this. You could just you know, sew this together, tuck under the, the seam allowance and the raw edges and just sew it together like that. And then you've got like a static coffee sleeve. Uh, the way I prefer to do it is I'm gonna sew a button onto this end and then a loop of elastic onto this end. And that way you can also unbutton it and use it over a mug, which I think is really versatile. And it kind of stretches to accommodate different coffee cups and whatever you may need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just sew the left side closed. So I could do this with a slip stitch or I'm gonna do a whip stitch, I think, just cause it's a little bit easier. Now, if you were smart, unlike me, you may have left a little bit more room at the end of the design for the button, but uh, I'm just gonna ignore that. Now what I will do is I'll just sew the button on through both the fabric and the cardboard. Button is sewn on and now I've got a little length of elastic and my open side. And then in the center here, I'm gonna take my piece of elastic and fold it into a loop. And now when I whip stitch this part, I will also stitch through the elastic and tack it down. What a simple project. I forget how quickly these come together. I mean, it didn't today because I took like 10,000 breaks and my name is way too long to embroider on a freaking coffee sleeve. All in all, I think if I put together the sewing hours, even including the embroidery, it was like three hours, which is a lot faster than a lot of my other projects. Let me show you how this goes. I like having the elastic in the button because, you know, it can expand to fit different cups and I'm gonna put it on a mug and show you. So I have put it on a mug that my friend very kindly gave to me for Christmas. Um, you can see how much of the elastic has to stretch for that one though. So maybe put a little bit more elastic if you're planning to use these on more on mugs than on travel cups, but I tend to get a lot of travel cups or use my reusable ones at coffee shops and things. And I work at a coffee shop, so it just makes sense. I should have done like a nice reveal with a cup of hot chocolate or something, but it's like 80 degrees and I'm dying. 80 degrees is not even that hot. I've just like got used to the cold London weather and now we're like having a bazillion heat waves because of climate change and stuff, so yay. So I guess that is it for this project. I hope that was helpful. I don't know how many of you are actually gonna make one of these, but I find them to be really nice, like quick and easy gifts. And again, they're really personalizable and fun to make. Thank you for coming along with me on this coffee sleeve making adventure. I hope it was fun for you. It was fun for me. And I will see you next time.